Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Peter Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to William Ryan Key about his new EP coming on February 11th. We're going to talk about a bunch of things. Welcome to the show, man. It's good to see you. Thanks, dude. Thanks for having me. I see you're representing Georgia with your hoodie. Oh yes, sir. <laughs> I woke up. Uh, I woke up a national champion for the first time in 41 years today. <laughs> so you have and, to, uh, right? <laughs> that's my entire natural-born life. So <laughs> my mother and I were embracing in full streaming tears last night at the end of the game. <laughs> so uh, that's so big great. Night, big oh, yeah. night for me and my fam. Huge night for sure. You know, you've been doing this for a while, but what's it kind of like? when you have music that's ready to go that you're done Mm -hmm. recording and everything but it's not out yet what is that kind of calm before the storm like for you as an artist where it's like ready to go but it's not out yet you know it's interesting is this particular batch of songs i've actually had since summer of 2020 Mm -hmm. so they've been sitting for a long time um I initially released them just to patrons uh, through Patreon. Yep. Uh, and then, and always kind of had the thought that down the road it would be cool to release them, but didn't really have a plan for it. And uh, when that conversation started, Equal Vision came to the table and wanted to work with me, which is truly an honor. And I'm so happy to be uh, part of the Equal Vision family now. And, um, and yeah, so I, I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I'm, this, this time around, I've been sitting on the songs for so long. I'm kind of numb to it. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm definitely not like full of anxiety or anticipation really about the release this time, just because uh, most of like the core fan base that has stuck with me post yellow card has heard these songs already because yeah. they're, they're, they're hanging with me on Patreon and Twitch and stuff. And, um, but I am excited for the world to hear these songs, you know, as, as a wide release, it's, it's a really different, um, it's it's a different direction for me sonically and mm-hmm. um i i think that it's gonna you know it's gonna be interesting for people to hear where i'm where i'm at musically uh, yeah and how i've grown as an artist on my own over the last four or five years and uh but it, but in the past i mean you know she, yellow card being my only other real um um the only real experience i had with releasing music mm-hmm. in that way we would i mean it was it was so stressful dude like you're just waiting and waiting and wait like you know you finish this record that you took 12 weeks to make or however long you know 16 weeks to make and and you're sitting on it you're listening to it a hundred times in a row because you think it's the best thing you've ever made you know every time every record's the best record you've ever made and, uh, <laughs> and it's and so just, true right you know yeah, that too yeah, every sure. time like and you sure. have sometimes it feels like you like it's like a marketing tactic right like you have yeah. to kind of go with, with that mindset <laughs> But it feels that way. I mean, yeah. you think that you genuinely believe that, you know, every time. So, um, yeah, I, I've, I've been in through sort of, I think, both extremes of, of mm-hmm. feeling super anxious and excited. And, you know, it's waiting for Christmas, basically, to release the record. Um, and then with the solo stuff, it's just a little more laid back. And I, I think that's one of the things I enjoy about it. It's a real low pressure environment. You know, I'm making the music I want to make. I've got a team of people that I love working with mm-hmm. um, that don't seem to be putting any pressure on you know, how, how, how many streams we get or don't get or any, uh, just, just real, real laid back. And uh, it's a really good environment for me to be in it's, mentally. It's interesting too, because you mentioned the Patreon and you mentioned the yellow card fans and everything. And I find it interesting now, nowadays as well, because I find just, I'm, I'm discovering so many new bands like every day, like because of streaming services, mm-hmm. like, it, like I've yep. literally discovered like 12 amazing bands a day where I'm like, I've never heard this band before in my life. Right. So yeah. It's interesting that you're kind of in a situation where you mentioned, you know, there are some people that are going to know you from Yellow Card that are excited for your music that have been there forever. But then there's a kind of, because of streaming services, a whole new kind of world of different people that might not know about your music. That's a pretty cool tag team there a little bit, I find. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, you have your fingers crossed that that these songs are going to land on the right playlist that, uh, you know, I mean, it's funny, some some of the things I, I see... Uh, you know, some of the, the the news outlets reporting on it or, you know, talk, just, just updating, hey, you know, Ryan's got a new release coming out or whatever. Um, it's still a lot of, it's still a lot of like punk and like metal mag- magazines and online webs and stuff like that. <laughs> and it's like, 
you listen to the EP, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it's and you no, know, but I appreciate. I'm not. I, I, I of course I, I'm grateful for the support and the love of, of anybody who wants to help me out by promoting the music. I love it, but um, you know, you want to. I'm in a position where I hope that the songs can land on. Uh, you know the the types of playlists that are doing what you're that will do what you're talking about. Kind yeah, of put the music in in front of uh, you know, or put the music into new ears and into the ears of people who are listening to music in uh, more of the direction and style that I'm creating music now because it's mixed into these playlists via DSP via streaming services. And yep. so I think when that happens, you know, if if someone's turned on by by one of the songs that they hear. Um, I, you know, either they won't ever go through finding out that I was in Yellow Card, or mm. it will be a real shock to them when they do find out, you know, what they're listening to if they're, if, if they're stoked on it to be like, wait, who is that? You know? Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think um, I, I think it's a cool sort of uh, open space. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with it. But again, it, it's so I'm, ma- I'm creating so much these days, not all of it getting released, obviously, but I'm in the studio every day making something oh, yeah. um, that I'm just in this real kind of relaxed. I enjoy creating and, and I don't really care what big, happens with the music. Is that the biggest misconception, Ryan, would you say in music as well? Because I even remember, you know, watching like you look at like you watch like music biopics like Straight Outta Compton and everything and they're, tr- they're mm-hmm. trying to kind of like there's a like they're trying to show all like the glam and everything but at the end of the day kind of like what you just said it's just like you know they're doing a lot of research for that movie I, I interviewed some of the cast of that and a lot of it was just them in a studio just working the whole time like is yeah. that a misconception that people don't realize like a lot of the time it's just you guys even with yellow car just making music like that's all it basically is yeah i mean now what i'm doing these days is, is obviously very different it's it's much more of a uh, for lack of a better term, like a day job for yeah. me to be in the studio. Um, you know, I'm not touring at all and I'm working on a lot of film and TV sync geared stuff. And so I'm just in there creating, you know, it's kind of like make your coffee, turn on the rig. It's going to work. And That's I'm awesome, yeah. super lucky to be that be my work, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm really stoked on, on where I'm at. Um, but yeah, well, obviously when you're in a rock band for 20 years, like there is that crazy rock and roll stuff that happens on the road and where, but in the studio, it's pretty, yeah. Like if you were to come <laughs> to the studio on any given day while yellow card is making a record, you'd be like, this is boring as shit. Yeah. But same like, way, I used to be a concert promoter, like backstage, everyone wants to go backstage. Yeah. Backstage is so dark. Nothing's There's happening. Nothing, <laughs> nothing happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, especially now, dude, especially nowadays, this is just, that's backstage. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, well, that was backstage with like la- I remember like Taste of Chaos. I went like backstage for like a meet and greet and stuff. Everyone was on their laptops like watching Pirates of the Caribbean. Like yeah, it was. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Dude. Um, I did mention. Um, yeah, no, it's it's crazy. Like it it's it's interesting to see those misconceptions there. Um, you did mention you know you were a yellow card. That was a big part of your life, obviously. Um, I think that you are one of the greatest pop. Pop. What do you think about the genre? Like, well, you guys were a pop punk band, right? That that's what it was, right? Like, it's tough, right? Like, I'm not a real big fan of the that okay that oxymoron that has penetrated the music world for yeah. however long now. Um, punk? Did we say you know, Yellow Card was a punk band? No, I would not. That's my point. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. Bad Religion is a punk band. Rise Against yeah. is a punk band. You know, the Sex Pistols were a punk band. Like, we wrote pop songs about breakups and stuff like it's not it's just not so to it's almost like insulting to, to have, that's you know, interesting so like pop I, rock now, are we gonna say pop yellow rock card, yeah yeah i would say probably so i i think rock, yeah. i think yellow card is one of the greatest pop rock bands of all time i really thank you i really appreciate okay that. And, <laughs> I, and i think that's the right way to i think that's the right way to describe it what look when when yellow card formed as a band but you know several years before i joined the band they were they were punk as fuck i mean it yeah. was it was edgy mid nineties skate punk that, you know, it was really, when I joined the band, uh, you know, and, and was sort of brought in, um, in a lot of ways as a songwriter, uh, I was, I was nervous about like not changing the name of the band because it was so dramatic of a shift from what they were to what we became. And, um, and, and I, so I think there were elements of that that hung on in our, and maybe in our lifestyle, maybe in our politics, maybe, in, you know, th- there were, there's a, a part of us that was a bit punk rock shirt, oh, yeah. but, but I, I got, I had really, um, I was really fortunate through my time in Yellow Card to actually um, spend time with, learn from, befriend some of the most legendary real life punk bands that yeah. I grew up listening to. 
Um, I'm really know, interested because you you were a tour member. I I might be wrong on this. Did you do a little bit of stuff of Newfound Glory? I yeah, I played guitar. Okay, for is two that years, a pop yeah. punk band? But, yeah, they're yeah. Newfound's New <laughs> way more punk than Yellow Card, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but I'm talking about Bad Religion and No Effects. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And I'm, these these bands I grew up in in the '90s, you know, worshiping. Uh, a lot of those guys ended up becoming mentors and friends, and that was something I, I'll never, uh, you know, I'm, I still pinch myself some of the experiences I got to have. Yeah. Um, but that's when I really was like, I'm not punk rock at all. I shop at Pottery Barn. Like, what? What am I? <laughs> we're, we're not. We're not a. We're not a. Um, you know, we're just uh, punk is a is a it's a strong word, man. It gets thrown around now. At I one point, nowadays it gets thrown around too easily. Now, at one point, you know, you were like Yellow Card was on a major label at one point, correct? Mo- yeah, most, most of it. Most yeah, are, so, well, uh, not, not most. I would no. It's actually it actually wasn't most. Um, it was about half and half. To be honest, yeah. uh, so independent and major, okay. But. So my question then is because for me, how I discovered you guys was a TV show on TV called Pepsi Smash. Yep, that's how that I discovered. First, that was yeah. the first live, uh, live television. Yeah, so event type thing we did. Can you even so you get opportunities like that? I'm sure then it sinks in a little bit because you have it's exposure and everything. But like when you're putting together recording songs like Ocean Avenue and Breathing and only like all these songs, only one. Do you even do you know or can you do you, can you even tell that you're onto something that these songs are going to be that huge? Like, is there any predictability that comes into it, or does it just kind of happen, man? Not not back then. No, okay. I mean uh, th- there's a feeling of like, wow, this is what we're what we're making is yeah, you know. As you say, the best record we ever made. Every time, every time we make one, <laughs> um, and I think when we made Ocean Avenue in particular, there was a feeling in the room of like, "Wow, this is really special." But we had no idea what you know. It just it became that, the song. Like it became a year and these... a half later, we were yeah. going to be selling thirty, forty thousand records a week. We had no idea that was coming, that, you know? that and, because that was the name of the record too, right? Ocean Avenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that yeah. song. That's like the song, man. Like it all, yeah, it, it, it really. Uh, it's why I still have a job, you know. It's why it's why I'm able to now make crazy, uh, atmospheric, like experimental synth-driven, you know, um, yeah, yeah. seven-minute-long songs because uh, I, I, you know, we worked really hard and, and we we got had a lot of luck and I think we wrote some good songs and uh, Ocean Avenue, obviously being the one that that resonated the most of our whole career. But yep. it's honestly, man, it's it's really why I get to do. Uh, music still today, you know, and, and really be free to create what I want to create. There's so many that have been for me. And I, I do have to say, man, like, um, like we'll wrap up soon. I'll get back to your EP very quickly. But I just want to say for me, like I talked to you before we started. I mean, music for me was medicine, you know, bullying and everything, going through tough times and everything, provide escape. Yellow Card was one of those bands for me that really helped me for a lot of crazy times. So I did want to say thank you, man. Seriously. Yeah, of course, man. I mean, you know, it's. I don't. I don't think. I, I think some artists maybe. I, I don't know that we ever really had like conscious thought of writing music going mm-hmm. like this is going to be really. This is really going to help people, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and to know that it does is it's it's humbling and and, and not and, only uh, Ocean yeah, Avenue, really man. Cool. Like the ever like lights and sounds, fighting like tons of songs, yeah. man. A cut me Mick yeah. was one of my favorites. I used to love all the time, right? Like just like a lot yeah. of those, right? So thank cool. you for that. This new EP that's coming out February 11th is exciting, man. I'm so happy for you. When people get a chance to listen to it, what are you hoping they get out of it, or a bunch of takeaway wise? What are you What are you thinking? Well, obviously, it's it's uh, as I've said, it's it's so so different. Uh, from anything that I've done before, e- even even the two EPs I released um, in 2018, um, yep. sort of stepping out on my own for the first time. This is, you know, three years removed from that, and and in that time, um, just the work I was doing in the studio, the, the music I was drawn to create changed even a lot. And uh, from from when I started making those first couple EPs, and so those those influences, those inspirations, really sort of just weave their way into the, the music I was writing for myself, but. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I don't. I don't know, man. I I, I hope people come in, come into it with an open mind because it's it's such a different experience from what you would expect to hear from um, someone like me that was that was in a a, a pop punk pop rock whatever we're calling it <laughs> band. Um, you know, this is it's it's you know it's this is really um, it, it's it's electronic driven um it's really orchestral it's it's, uh, it's genre bending like and I like you're you're putting a lot of genres in there as well. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think, uh, you know, every, whatever, whenever I'm making music nowadays, I, I keep, um, I kind of have like film and TV sync in the back of my yeah. mind. Like I, I, I it, it's a world of, 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 
music that I, I really, really want to continue to strive to be a part of yep. um, scoring film and, and things like that. It's, it's kind of where, I, where I'm headed. And so even if I, you know, I'm releasing something um, that is more singer songwriter driven like this, uh, you know, for, for fans to listen to with lyrics and everything, I'm still in my mind when I'm building the tracks and creating the songs, I'm thinking of how expansive and how, um, how cinematic can I make the, the movements of this piece. And um, so it's not your typical structure pop songs, you know, I'm not going like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, like it, uh, so, I mean, not that I can't and some of them uh, may, but I, I mean, on this EP shit, man, I, like the, the first song doesn't even really have a chorus. <laughs> Uh, the second song only has two choruses and the second one is like almost three minutes long. It's just, so it's, it's a whole, you know, it's just a different writing experience. Um, and, and I, 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 I'm trying to sort of accomplish both things, release music that I'm excited about as a, as a solo artist, but also, uh, keep in mind of trying to maybe catch someone's ear, uh, in, in the film world with, with the music I'm making too. And so. Totally. I've been yeah. interviewing a lot of film composers lately too, and they're the best conversations because there's so much to talk about in terms of. Yeah, and I bring, love it, man. Yeah, it's so freaking cool. Um, I we uh my 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 writing partner is, is Ryan Mendez from Yellow Card, the, the lead guitarist from yeah. Yellow Card. We we work together uh, a, a lot still, um, and uh, we have a project we've been working on for shit almost five years now, um, which is just full on straight up EDM. Um, it's it's more it's sort of I guess you would call it experimental EDM because yeah. it's not like clubby uh party style edm it's it's more uh um, i think people just assume because like the e in edm stands for electronic and know, everyone just assumes well, that it's funny. dance music too you know but what's like funny yeah. is they, they, there's there's like a sub genre that started to pop up for more uh, more the space that we sort of live in and by the way when i say party i don't mean that there's no negative connotation there at all like i'm not i'm not talking down on any type of oh no 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 I, no, like, no absolutely yeah I, I i mean so party may not be the right word that may sound a little condescending i, I guess i mean to say like like super high energy club dance, rager you know? it's not rager yeah music. yeah 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 <laughs> sure sure um but they, but so so a few years ago people started tagging this or maybe even longer i don't know but they started tagging it uh, like a subgenre and calling it idm which is intellectual dance music mm. but most but most of the artists that were getting tagged with it were saying like i don't want to be called that you're that's insinuating that the artists that you're not calling this are not intellectual like it's like we're smarter than that like it, it really came off the wrong way so um i i don't i don't think that's stuck in that therefore you it's just you'd have to call it edm that's what it is you know yeah. um but it's but it's we use you know we use a lot of strings a lot of piano a lot of really spacey ambient synths but it has that that pulsing kind of dance beat behind it which is i think where it falls into that yep. so ryan and i've been working on a, on a full-length record for like i said almost five years we're, we're just honing in on on the end of it um but we're, we call the project jetta um j-e-d-h-a and we actually scored our first film as jetta we we hope that um, I hope to be doing scoring stuff on my own, but Ryan and I are also very excited about scoring things, you know, music by Jetta. We, we really, we want to see, you know, a film in theater someday that says music by Jetta. That's like our, that's, that's dream. so awesome. And uh, so we scored our first little independent film last summer and we had a blast, just the experience, like m me being as excited as I am about hoping to do this in the future, the first real opportunity, even though, you know, it was, a step above a student film is a friend of mine. Um, he's, he's a, a really, he's a successful working actor, but he, you know, self kind of self financed this thing and wrote it himself. And, um, and uh, it's, you know, they're taking it out to festivals and stuff now, but you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like anything had happened, but we know it's not like getting picked up by Paramount pictures. Right. So oh, it's yeah. just, no, absolutely. But, it, but, it, but to cut our teeth on it, man, and, and just have picture, you know, with actors delivering lines that we are helping elevate, and, and impact the scene um it's just man it was it was life-changing honestly like it was like doing it the first time was last year well actually this was summer of, of 2020 now god I'm, i can't believe 2021 is gone <laughs> summer 2020 is when we scored this film um but that was really a moment for me where i i was like this is it this i want i want to do this every day for the rest of my life yeah. you know um i'm, I'm a huge uh fan of film i always have been i, I grew up a theater kid i went to university for theater uh, was aspiring to be an actor my whole life and ended up in a band on accident sort of and so if i can combine those two worlds you know my my music making that i've that's I've the dream for you right like and film, <laughs> it's it's the dream yeah so 100 we'll percent. i'm so what happens uh, yeah uh, we have ryan and i have another really really cool project coming up this year uh for a very very big thing uh we, we definitely have landed our first real real gig and uh we're really stoked to announce that to the world when we can yeah um but uh yeah I, so i to back to sort of the EP, just that, you know, when people listen to this music, 
um, I hope it moves them. You know, that's yeah. what I'm trying to do. I'm trying. I'm trying to make. Um, I'm, I'm trying to make this music, you know, really, really impactful. You know, a lot of emotion, a lot of, um, a, a lot of drama to say, yeah. like in the tracks. You know, um, so we'll see. We'll see what people think. Ryan, thank you so much for your time, man. This was great chatting with you. Seriously. Yeah, dude. Thanks so much for having me, man. So yeah, it's coming out ele- the 11th of February. It's going to be available wherever you listen to music, right? It's going to be available. Yeah, you can you can that you can stream uh, two of the songs already. Uh, yep. I have a song called Face in a Frame and a song called Brighton that are yep. out. Um, now, really cool video um, by an artist, uh, scene film. He does um, uh, stop motion animation yep. uh, with like a paper or origami. It's it's wild, wild shit. Yep. Um, love it. I'm I'm so so in love with the video. It's it's so cool. So you can check that out on my YouTube page. Everything I do is just at William Ryan Key. Yep. Um, all over the internet. Um, I am running my Patreon page again, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's paused at the moment because I'm moving um rebuilding my studio next over the next month or so but um really really fun man we're just basically the whole concept behind it is when i'm in the studio the camera is on you know i've kind of learned over the last two years how to run that well and keep people engaged and doing the twitch thing was was really cool they were incredibly supportive and and you know it was my job last year which was awesome um to to make a make a living the way i did doing that but um i think that I learned that process that like the streamer side of it isn't as much for me, like kind of always on, you know, like yeah. having to be engaged with chat. And I, I when I'm working, I'm, wor- I'm working, you know, and we were trying to do these working streams on Twitch. And I think there was a little bit of a disconnect um, because I would get so focused on the work and I wouldn't. So what I tried to do is gather those that are most supportive and most dedicated and interested in watching me work. And they sort of understand now if I'm tuning in for a stream, I don't, Maybe, maybe we'll chat, maybe we won't, but if I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. And I'm oh, working. absolutely. So, you know, if music production and film scoring and this kind of stuff is interesting to you, um, you it's patreon.com slash William Ryan Key. And uh, as soon as I get the studio up and running, I'll be streaming pretty much five days a week. Um, so we're having a good time. It's a really cool community, man. Discord server is really awesome. People yeah. meet each other from all over the world and becoming friends, and it's been really cool to watch. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn. YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. William Ryan Key's... EP is coming out February 11th. Until next time, this is William Ryan Key and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.